If you can, let's, stay, let's remain standing and turn to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, remain standing as we read the scriptures. John chapter 14, verse 15 and on. And in the words of Jesus, it says here, if you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it's not looking for him. And does, doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you. Now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me. But you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in, the, in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Jesus, thank you. Because you gave us instructions. That if we obey your commandments, if we obey your word. Your love will be in us you will be in us and that brings us into relationship with you the father and the holy spirit because you will never leave us you will never abandon us no matter the situation or the circumstance lord god we will continuously run towards you lord god no matter what happens we will remain faithful to you lord god father son and holy spirit in relationship with you god lord god thank you because you live in us if we obey your commandments, we say yes to you, Lord. We say yes to you, Jesus. I ask of you, Lord, that you may use this word to bless your church, your people, your sons and daughters. We pray this in all of Jesus' name. And all of God's people say, amen, amen, amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. What a moment in the presence of God. Welcome those who are here for the first time. Welcome, welcome. And those who are family, come on, SBC, can I hear you loud and clear? Come on. Welcome those who are here visiting for the first time. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord speak to you on this day in Jesus' mighty name. Um, and so today I want to do something special and welcome our newest member of our worship team, Ariel. Come on, Ariel. Come on, throw our hands together for Ariel. We love worship we love to sing songs unto god we love god's word we love the power of god manifested in our lives but what what is something that is incredibly important is for us to have the love of god in us but also demonstrating to others this love that jesus has demonstrated for us is that it's in relationship to him he has given his life. He has died on a cross. He rose again to give us life and life in abundance. This Jesus in whom we worship is not just a man. It's not just a figure. It's not just a figure of hope. It is our God, the one we love, the one we serve, the one we obey, the one we follow, the one that leads us. He is the good shepherd. And without him, we cannot be, we cannot, we can't do anything. And so the thing is that we, we want to worship the Lord. We want to exalt his name, but, but, but this is the thing. is a heart check. Do you love me? This is what the Lord is saying. Do you love me? 
And this is a question that I have for you throughout this entire afternoon tonight, uh, today. I want you to realize that the question is, do you love me? Do you love the Lord with your whole heart? Do you love the Lord with your actions, with your words, with your walk? Do we love God truly, not just to worship him in our private time, but truly in our daily walk? Do we love God? Do we seek him? Because without him, we cannot do anything. And, and this is where we want to understand and sit and say, Lord, of course we're going to say we love God. But it's a deeper relationship in which God is looking for. It's a deeper relationship that God is seeking from us. It's not just that he answers prayers when we ask. It's that if, even if we are waiting or he says no, we will still love God. We will still love him despite of what's going on in our lives. That his love is what sustains us. His love is what we believe in and what, which we trust in and we depend on. Here we see in John, he says, he says to the disciples, if you obey my commandments, I will be with you. I will be in you in relationship, in communion. I will never leave you or abandon you. I'm leaving, but I'm sending an advocate, uh, one to fight for you. This is like a lawyer figure. And, and he, he fights for you. Lord, what, what should I do? And this is when things get tough in our lives. It's like, Holy Spirit, help me. And the Holy Spirit will show up. Why? Because Jesus said that he will send the Holy Spirit. He, will, he said, we are living in relationship. The moment we go through certain situations in our lives, who would he call, who we call? The closest people to us. Hello, somebody. We call the closest people to us. Hey, my wife, my girlfriend, my, 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 my best friend. Hey, I'm going through something. Right? A text message, 911. I need you. I know it's late. But this is the thing is when we need to ask God to come and save us. We can call on the Holy Spirit, and he is there. He will answer your prayers. He is our advocate. And those, those who accept my commandments and obey them, accept and obey my commandments, are the ones who love me. Because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. To each one of them. This is, this, is, this is beautiful because God is revealing himself to each one of us. I want you to know that this is a special message for you. This is a love letter from God. <laughs> this is a love letter from God because I'm going to reveal myself to each of you. Each one of us, we have a, a unique way of connecting. We have a unique way of connecting, of receiving a message. That's the way I like to hear it. Come on, somebody. Some of you, some of you are fans of people because of the way they express themselves. I like the way he expresses them. I like her. I like her. You know, that, that's how we connect. And God is saying, I will reveal myself to each one of you. Meaning, it's not as a group. God is calling you as an individual. God made you as who you are. God made you. He gave you the name. He knows who you are. He gave you the character and the blood that flows through you and the, the, the hairs on your head. The Bible says that he even knows the number of hairs on our head. Come on, somebody. I want you to know that God is calling each one of you individually into a relationship with him. All for love. Say it with me. All for love. So I'm going to speak under the title, Stay Connected. Stay Connected. I know we're going through, we have gone through a difficult season, two years of, of, of what we want to not even call it anymore. <laughs> we all know what's happening. And we're finally breaking through. But this is the moment that the church has to not give up. This is not the, 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 the church to be weakened. This is not you as an individual to give in to fear, anxiety. This is when you stand up in the name of Jesus and say, Lord, I am not alone. I, the Father is with me. Jesus is with me. And the Holy Spirit is with me. And if God is with me, what, it doesn't matter what comes against me. Why? Because I'm protected by the power of God. John chapter 15, go there with me. It's a beautiful story of, of the vine. And if you, don't, if you haven't read it, this is going to be a beautiful uh, uh, a day for you because this is what God calls us to be. Connected to him, stay connected. John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine, that does not produce fruit. 
and he, pr he prunes and branches, prunes and br branches that do not bear fruit, so they will produce even more. If you have plants, some of you uh, may have plants and know that if you cut some of the, 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 the burnt leaves and, and things that don't belong, it, 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 may, it allows your plant to grow a little stronger. My, my, my wife taught me that. It's not that I, that I know this. My wife taught me that. You know. <laughs> so, so here we see it, that it is true. A gardener that cares for his garden will prune it. Why? So that it can grow stronger. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severe from the vine. And you cannot be fruitless, fruitful, unless you remain in me. Don't miss that. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me, if you can highlight that, and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. This is a, a, a declaration. God is saying, outside of me, apart from me, you can do nothing. Say, I can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Nobody wants to be that. We want to be useful. Say, Lord, use me. Lord, use me. I don't want to be cut off. I want to be used in the kingdom. I want to give fruit. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned up. But if you remain in me and my word remains in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. When what? When you produce much fruit, you are you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. Glory to who? To the Father. Because everything we do in this world is to give fruit, to give glory to the Father. Not ourselves, not for my name to be glorified. Is that so that his name can be glorified. If you want to be used by God, you have to understand that you have to put yourself to the side and let God use you so you can give fruit and give life to those around you. Come on, somebody. God is connecting you to him, and we remain connected to him. Why? Because we need to give fruit. We need to give hope. We need to give life through the word of God that lives in us, not because of who we are, but what God has done in us. There are some of you who, are, who have gone or are going through certain situations, but God is breaking through in the name of Jesus so that you can share your story with someone else because what you're going through is not coincidence. It is your purpose to be lifted up from this in the name of Jesus. Why? Because we are connected to the vine who is Jesus. Come on, somebody. Give them some praise. Give them praise. This brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as my Father has loved me. Wow. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as I obey my Father's commandments. This is what Jesus came to earth to because he was obeying the Father. Just as I obeyed my Father's commandments, I remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with joy. Come on. I'm telling you all this, all this so, so you won't be like uh, all upset and, and grouchy and, and angry. No, no, no. It's so that you can receive joy. There is joy in God. There is joy in Jesus. There is joy in loving God. It's not a religious act. It's that we find life 
joy when, when the world looks at us and says, well, what's the big deal about Jesus and going to church and, and worshiping and lifting your hands? What, what is up with all that stuff? This is it. Because it gives us joy. If we're connected to Jesus, he it will give us joy. He will give us life. He will give us hope. Why? Because he's made a way for us to believe in Jesus. Stay connected. Somebody say it with me. Stay connected. Stay connected. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I obey the Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. What were we just singing? Fill me up till I overflow. Overflow with what? With joy. Because the joy is the one that the Lord gives. And we want to be filled with his joy, filled with his mercy, filled with his grace. Why? So that it can overflow and overflow. And what? When it overflows, what happens? It gets on everything else. It gets on everything else. It gets on your job. It gets on your spouse. It gets on everywhere you go. What's, what's going on? With it? There's an overflow of joy. There's an overflow. Don't you see when somebody smiles and laughs, it is contagious? Come on, somebody. I want you in the name of Jesus to be filled with the joy that comes from God. Put a smile on your face. Come on. How many of you can smile? Even if you have a mask on, smile and say, I receive the joy of the Lord. Some of us need to just laugh a little. Just, just put it down our shoulders a little bit. Just relax. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We're, we're seeking other things. We're seeking uh, uh, parties. We're seeking people. We're seeking uh, uh, IG likes. And if who, who, I'm going to post and I get depressed if nobody likes it. Like. But if we're filled with the joy of the Lord, if we're filled seeking God, connected to the true love, which is Jesus. This relationship got messed up, but, and I, I don't know who to love and who's going to love me back. And, and so many people depressed on Valentine's because they didn't get flowers. But it goes beyond who's living with me, who's showing me love. The reality is that. Jesus has already shown this love that he wants to pour into us that will overflow in joy, in joy, in laughter. Pastor, bro, I'm going through the worst time of my life. Let the Holy Spirit lead you into a life of joy despite of what you're going through. Despite, put your eyes on Jesus and he will give you that peace that you need. Stay connected to Jesus. Stay connected to Jesus. Verse 12. Verse 12. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. Don't miss this, church. Please do not miss this. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master does not confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. Somebody give God some praise. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command. Love each other. This is my command to you to love each other. As a matter of fact, Jesus is calling us friends because he has shared the most intimate Things that you will share that if you're in a relationship with someone. What he is sharing is what the Father in heaven told him. And Jesus now tells his disciples. And through the Holy Spirit, he continues to share this love and this information of relationship and love with his disciples. If you are a follower of Jesus, obeying his command, you are in, his, in relationship with him. And he is showing you the 
the secret of heaven. What is the secret of heaven? Love. Why did Jesus come to save us? All for love. And he's saying, if you, if you love me, love each other. And that is when it gets difficult for us humans. Church people or non-church people. I've heard people say, I can't stand people. <laughs> I can't stand my coworkers. My husband, I barely love him. <laughs> Lord, help me. And it's this trying to love and care when the true love that will stem from the inside is the love of God. We cannot love if Jesus is not living on the inside. And if we're not connected to the branch, we're, we're going to be in trouble. Why? Because we're going to be doing it in our own effort and strength. And God wants to take off that burden off our shoulders and say, if you are in me, connected with me, love will just easily flow. You will love your neighbor. You will love your boss. You will love your husband and your wife and your children whenever they're hanging off the pants of your, 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 your daddy and mommy and daddy and mommy. I still love you. You can hang on and I love you. Come on. Somebody needs to receive the love of God and be led by the love of God. Hmm. Love each other. So difficult to love people. But through God, we can love. Love one another. Love one another. This is what the church is about. This is what family is all about. Despite our, we have flaws. How many of you have flaws? Oh, that's good. Some people are honest. How many of you have flaws? And yet with all our flaws, God still calls us friend. As a matter of fact, Jesus came to earth knowing they're flawed. If it's not for me, they will remain in their sin. And I am the ultimate sacrifice. And if we don't remain in this love with God, we're in trouble. Why? Because if he loves us, we should love one another. In church, outside of church, despite the differences that we may have, that the love of God that's in us, let it overflow. Let you have a conversation without getting all riled up and angry. And have a conversation in peace and in love. Why? Because that will show you how different you are from the rest show love love one another and here i want to i'm going to jump to john chapter 21 and i'm going to give you some background before we go to john 21 and jesus is telling uh tells peter in the last supper um that he would deny him three times and peter being peter says no nah, not me i'm not gonna fail you and what happened was just as Jesus said, the sovereignty of Jesus was manifest right there. Mijo, you're going to fail three times. And here it is. Um, but it led him to this moment. Jesus showed up the third time, uh, showed up three times to these disciples after his resurrection. So after the resurrection, Jesus showed up three times to his disciples. Don't miss this. Peter failed Jesus, denied him. Three times. Jesus shows up to the disciples when they were full of fear, anxiety. What comes next? The Messiah is dead. Uh, but Jesus shows up three times. Three times in scripture is pay attention. Surely, surely is going to happen. I'm with you. So Peter three times. Surely, surely you're going to fail. But Jesus shows up three times saying it's going to be all right. I'm proving to you that I'm alive and I'm well. Truly, I told you this will happen. Three times he shows up after his, his resurrection. And here, the disciples, after failing, feeling like failures, they went back to what they knew, and that's fishing. I love fishing. I don't know about you, but I love it. Every time I, hear, I read this story, I'm like, yeah, take me. I'm there. <laughs> So they're, they're fishing because they're like kind of depressed. What are we going to do, do now? Because Peter has failed them three times. Uh, and this is eating him on the inside. This is eating him on the inside. He's like, I failed the master. What, what can I do? And God, knowing all things, he calls them from the shore. And this is the third time he shows up. And he says, hey, fellas, what's up? Have you caught anything? And they don't know it's Jesus. No, we haven't caught anything. And Jesus tells them, throw the net on the other side. 
Wait a minute, this sounds familiar. This is how we first met. I heard this before. Who is, I mean, I think I heard this the first time. And Jesus comes and meets them where they are. They, he met them as sinners. And he, he met them again as sinners. They failed three times. So Jesus is still calling them out and saying, despite your weaknesses, I know your heart and your intention. I, I, can you, hey, throw it on the other side. Oh, that sounds familiar. And it says that when they fished, they pulled up so many fish and the net did not break. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he was showing them the power this sounds like Jesus. I know, I know what this sounds like. We've been living with him for three years, and I know this is, this is language of Jesus. And, 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 and they meet him. They fish. Thank God. They, they were provided with everything. But this is the thing. Jesus didn't say, give me two fish. Jesus already started the barbecue. <laughs> he, he already had the material. He already had the food. He just said, let's come and sit and have breakfast. Jesus is in such deep relationship. That he wants to bring you in even if you're flawed. Let's talk about what is going on. Let's sit and sit at the table and say, what is going on? And, he, and, and I can imagine this awkward conversation and this feeling, I failed you, Lord. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when we fail, we feel awkward coming to the presence of God. And sometimes we, 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 we go back into what we, are, we were used to doing before we met Jesus. Because we failed God so miserably and we feel so terrible that we go the other route instead of going regardless of what we're going through. And Jesus himself had to call Peter and the disciples and says, hey, come on, let's have some breakfast. Let's eat. Check this out. When Peter denied Jesus within the crowd, wait a minute, I think I, think I seen that guy with Jesus. And Peter said, me? Never. The Bible says at that moment they were sitting around a campfire made of charcoal. And they were sitting around waiting because he was close to where Jesus was arrested. And he stayed, but he was around charcoal. When, <laughs> when Peter comes, he sits exactly where he, sinned, he, he denied Jesus around fire. And Jesus brought him back to, remem to remind him. I knew what you did around the fire, but around the fire, I want to make all things new. And this is where I want us to read John chapter 21, verse 15. John 21, verse 15. I just gave you a scenario here of this deep conversation that's about to happen. And I want you to try to put yourself even in the story, try to feel what's going on. Uh, not that this is your story. This is for, for you to understand the relationship Jesus wants to have with Peter. John chapter 21, verse 15. After breakfast, Jesus asked Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? So this is a personal conversation. He's talking to Peter and he's saying, do you love me more than these? Than the other disciples. There's a comparison there. And check this out. Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs. Jesus told him, Jesus repeated the question. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said. You know I love you. Then take care of my sheep. Jesus said a third time. You see, here it is, the third time. He asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt that Jesus asked him this question a third time. You see, now he's hurt. He gets emotional. He got a little emotional there. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. When in, in the Greek, this word love is phileo love. That's the word love, phileo. Phileo is not just any word. 
This is, do you love me at an intimate level? Like a close friend. Do you love me? Can I trust you? Do you love me as close friend? And so phileo love is deeper than just love. <laughs> and what Jesus is trying to make sure of is that he knows what love is. Peter, I love you too. Peter, because of you, because of your sin and people like you, I, will, I did this. I died on the cross. Why? Because I know the hearts of man. I know the sinful nature. But this is it. Do you love me? Do you love me, Peter? Do you truly love me? The love is an intimate relationship of trustworthy friendship, closeness, and I can trust you regardless if we're here present or not. Peter, can I trust you? Do you love me, Peter? Do you love me? Do, can I trust you? Do you trust me? So you see this, this phileo love is a, a, a you give love, I return love. I give love, you return love. And this is the relationship that Jesus is calling Peter into. Peter, do you love me? And he asked him three times. Why? It's to verify, to make sure, and to say, yes, 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 Lord. You know everything about me. You know my heart. I will give everything. But in my weakness, I made a mistake. And Jesus says, I saw your mistake. I don't want to remind you of your mistake. I want you to move forward from your mistake. I want you to now feed my sheep, take care of my sheep, be around my sheep. Why? Because there's a trustworthiness here because you love me and I love you. Church, what Jesus is telling us today, do you love me, church? Do you love me, church? Do you trust me deeper than any friend that you may have, any, uh, more than your spouse, more than whatever's close to you? Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you truly love me? Why? Because I love you first. I chose you. I died for you. I know where I stand with you. But do you love me in return? Church, God is about to do something powerful and what this world is in need of is a church that stands up in the power of God showing the love of God because we truly love Jesus if you love Jesus come on you can give it a little stronger than that <laughs> feed my sheep phileo love what does this mean for us This emotional and redeeming interaction with Peter is a reminder of the Savior, Savior's deep, deep love for us. Paul writes to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, and says, If we are faithless, he remains faithful. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. Peter thought he can fight through it. Peter thought he can do it. And, P and Jesus told him, no, you're not. I know that you will fail me three times. Why? Because it's in our human nature to fail. We're sinful by nature. But Jesus is the one to come and rescue us because he is the only faithful one. Timothy, this is it. You, we may be unfaithful, but our God will always be faithful. Even, if, even when we fail, and we will fail, Jesus does not abandon us or gives up on us. He gives us grace and builds us up even more, strengthening us in his love. God's love strengthens us. God's love strengthens us. Well, pastor, how can I love? I, I want to tell you to love even your enemies. Love your enemies. Kill them with kindness. <laughs> kill your enemies with kindness. But why? Because that will strengthen you. If you allow 
the negativity and somebody else's anger to come up on you and, and, and fill your emotions and make you feel like you're worthless or somebody's verbal abuse. You're just receiving it and you're tired of it and you're just taking it. I want you to say in the name of Jesus, God loves me and I don't need you, but I'm going to kill you with kindness, but I'm going to know who I am. Why? Because I am with Jesus. I am with the Father and the Holy Spirit and nothing may come against me. Why? Why? Because I am covered and I am connected to the vine, the one that truly, truly loves me. And church, I want to tell you, the Bible tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And with this, I conclude. I want to tell you today that if we're talking about relationship, if we're talking about love, the most important relationship that we need to have is a relationship with Jesus. The most important, dedicated relationship that we have to have, and it's a commitment, a committed relationship, is a relationship with Jesus. Jesus is the one that will bring it all whole together. We may, we may be looking for love in other places other than God, but God is saying to us today, do you love me? Do you love me? And what Peter here is saying, Lord, you know that I love you. He says, so take care of my sheep. Take care of my sheep. Go into all nations. Go and preach this message of love. And when God corrects us, he shows us the way. When we think that we're going the right way and God says, no, it's not that way. It's all for love. It's all for love. Is why? Because he wants us to live in eternity with him. Church, I want to tell you that Jesus died for us on the cross and he will one day return. Just the way he ascended, he will descend to pick up his church to be with him forever. And I want to tell you today, if you don't know this Jesus, if you haven't allowed Jesus into your heart to have a deep relationship with God, I want to tell you that whatever you are in need of, the mental torment, the spiritual attacks that you may be feeling at night or uh, during the day, whatever the case, but you feel like you don't feel yourself. You feel like there's some spiritual attack, a mindset is not right, cloudy mind. I want to say that you are set free in the name of Jesus because there is power in the name of Jesus. And you are in the right place at the right time to hear the message of love and to set you free. The blood of Jesus was shed on the cross to give us life and life in abundance. We don't take it lightly. We don't take it for granted. It's, we don't, it's not a religious act. It's not just coming into a church building. It's a true relationship with accepting the love of God accepting that he died for us on the cross, that he rose again on the third day, that he ascended into heaven. He says, I will not leave you or abandon you. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, which dwells in us, with us, around us, to lead us. And this is what the Bible says, that we don't know, some don't know about the Holy Spirit because they're not even searching for him. If we seek we shall find. So we got to seek the presence of the Holy Spirit because the Bible says that we don't, we're not able to see the Holy Spirit because we're not seeking him. Imagine you will put your trust in God and seek the Holy Spirit like you are seeking your best employment ever. If you know there's a job opportunity out there, if there's an opportunity for a good school, You'll be the first one in line. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook up my resume. I'm going to make myself look good because this is what I need. Imagine we will put our effort to seeking God like if there's a grand prize at the end. 
I have good news. There is a grand prize. We get to live with Jesus forever in relationship with him, not just here on earth, but in heaven. And this is what the Bible tells us, that Jesus will return for his church that loves him, the bride of Christ. And it's all because of love. The bride and the groom will meet. Why? Because it is all for love. Jesus gave his all for his bride. We are his bride.